Well, it's another sunny day in Iceland, and today we're here at the Svinafelsa Jokul, and probably once again, I'm utterly massacring the pronunciation of the name, uh, but it's this, this glacier that you can see behind me in the Skaftafell National Park, and this is a really, really special place. Now, there's quite a few glaciers in the area. They all come down off the Vatnajökull. Again, I'm probably pronouncing that bad, badly, the Vatnajökull Glacier, which is just up behind us. This one in particular has these incredible leading lines. Now, it's a wonderful place to come here and shoot abstracts. You can see the different shades of blue that we've got here and the different layers. So we've been standing on this rock here with the telephoto lens shooting, uh, shooting abstracts. But when it really works is when you have a drone, because if you can get out and above the glacier looking down, the views are absolutely incredible. You've got these really strong leading lines that go all the way up to the mountains in the background and just pretty much everywhere you look it's a stunning view so we've been out this morning had, had a really really special morning shooting here and uh, i'm just i'm just really excited to shoot the footage it's been a really really excellent morning shooting in places like this i'm always fascinated by abstracts it was quite harsh mid daylight and so a wide scenic shot just didn't work it was too bright and the sky took away any mood from the scene but the same light was really pulling out the blues in the ice and giving them this translucent and turquoise glow. And the shapes of the glacier, these long lines that looked like sheets of ice laying together with long grooves between them, made it really perfect for abstract images, where I just focused in on a part of the glacier and removed the context, making the image all about the lines and the colors. Repeated shapes and forms work really well for abstracts, and what you find when you start to look for them is that every change of camera position gives you something different. And with a drone, you have so many different dimensions of movement, from the height above the glacier to the angle that you put the camera gimbal at. And each one of them gives you a totally different perspective. So I spent a long time here, flying up and down the glacier, shooting different frames and video. So I always had to keep an eye on the battery life as the interesting part of the glacier was about a kilometer away from where we were standing. I had to make sure that I had enough battery power to get the drone back. These kind of places have literally an infinite number of compositions. But in the end, the composition I liked best was simply looking straight down at the glacier from around 100 meters up with the shapes in the ice creating these long vertical lines through a horizontal frame. The simplicity and the harmony of the colors along with the repeated pattern of the lines is what works here. And this is a shot I was really happy with. I find it fascinating to see nature in this way from a different perspective and with a lot of the context removed, which makes the viewer question what it is that he's seeing. And it's this that for me make abstracts and intimate landscapes every bit as appealing as an epic panorama. Our next stop was Jokulsala, the iconic glacier lagoon. Now I've been here quite a lot and to be honest it's not really one of my favourite locations in Iceland but as the blue hour arrived the quality of light on the snow and the peaks to the north was absolutely wonderful. So instead of heading to the, lag to the lagoon to do a normal shot we hiked into the snow alongside it where the wind had carved the snow into these beautiful shapes. This smooth rolling landscape, it was almost like sand dunes with the peaks of the Vatnajökull glacier behind it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, again, this is a location that really worked better from an aerial perspective, but there was nowhere for us to stand where we could get the elevation to be able to really see the shapes in the snow. And being on the ground, they just weren't visible. But by getting the drone up, it gave me the potential to get that perspective and really allowed me to use the shapes carved by the wind in the snow as leading lines. I really love the curve of the lines in the snow here and how they create a leading line towards the mountains at the back, but I couldn't get them all in one frame. And also shooting with just one frame meant having to crop into the mountains at the back on either side. So I decided to shoot it as a two frame horizontal panorama. This really allowed me to get the full sweep of this line and also the whole range of the mountains behind. The lens on a drone is quite wide and with when you're shooting panoramas with a wide angle, elements of the scene change quite a lot when the camera is moved and while being high above the ground does mitigate that a little bit as the foreground is such a long way from the camera, it's still really important to have a large overlap to make the frames easier to merge together in post-processing. Using the drone here allowed me to make an image that really captured the mood of the place. The dusk atmosphere and these lines of drifting snow next to the lagoon all came together to create one of the most wonderful scenes I saw on the whole trip and this is one of my favorite images.
The next day, we'd arranged to meet a guy to hike underneath the glacier, something I'd wanted to do for years. The blues of the ice and the textures there look so photogenic, so I was really excited to have the chance to shoot it. You can't do this sort of thing on your own. You have to go with a guy to ensure that both the place is protected and also for your own safety. And there are complicated places to be. There's not a lot of space to move around. So finding compositions and setting up the camera is quite a challenge. In such a tightly enclosed space, an ultra wide angle lens really comes into its own. As beneath the glacier, the most interesting interesting feature is a roof with the light coming through. The colours of the ice here are wonderful and the shapes that the melting ice cause was fascinating. So I found this hole and that went through the ice and there was an almost heart shaped at the top of it. It was such an incredible feature but I needed context. So I asked my, my colleague Andrea to go and stand in front and he really gives the image scale. You can see how large the cave is as well as a splash of red on his jacket really contrasts with the turquoise and blues of the ice. This is actually a bit of an optical illusion as it seems that he's standing beneath the hole but he's actually quite a long way in front of it and the hole is directly above me. The only way I could capture the full depth of it with the heart shape at the top was to stand pretty much directly underneath and have the camera tilted back at 45 degrees. So the wide angle lens is capturing what's directly above me, these textures, textures in the ice that you can see at the back here, and just enough of the ground to have Andrea standing in the snow. Going deeper into the cave, we found this other hole in the ice, but this is a little bit more challenging to shoot as there was no light here, but I did have this incredible veins in the ice and it allowed me to create a more abstract image. Originally I shot it with no figure, but it lacked any context or scale at all. It could have been a macro shot, so it really needed a figure there to show how large that hole was. Climbing in wasn't easy, it's like being in the middle of an ice cube. And we could do it because we had crampons that really dug into the ice. Now, composition here, it's really simple. I was shooting as wide as possible to fit as much of the ice as possible into the frame. And the only decision I had to make is where to place the hole and the figure within the frame. As the right hand side had a lot more light to it, a lot more of the textures and shapes in the ice were visible. So I put the figure on the left third and use these lines and shapes in the ice as leading lines to move your eye along the figure to the center silhouetted against the light. So that's it for this third Iceland vlog. I'll be heading back there next March for a couple of workshops and there's still a place left. So if you'd like to join me photographing in this incredible landscape or indeed in the Italian Dolomites or Tuscany next year, just drop me a line and I'd love to have you along. If you have any questions about this video, drop me a comment below and I'll definitely get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching and take care.